Today's official Scott Thornley, Michael Stevens, and Richard Randall. Bob, two teams in the field of 65, 30 wins, one being Memphis, the other Utah State. Well, this is an interesting matchup, Craig, in the, in the sense that Marquette has played a very, very difficult schedule. The Big East, of course, the premier league in college basketball this year. And Utah State, a regional power. They have not played the same type of schedule against ranked opponents, but they are close by. They have a large contingent of fans here. It's going to be a very, very interesting game. Utah State is very efficient on offense. Marquette loves to take the ball to the basket. Wilkinson won the jump, and here's Quayle out front. The junior out of Perry, Utah. Four of the five starters for Stu Morrill recruited out of the state of Utah. Near, tur near turnover, Quayle gives it to Newbold. Has a good look, and there's a rebound. Lost it. Still picks it up, and good hustle underneath by McNeil. We'll see the hustle of Jarrell McNeil all, all morning long. Top five players in the Big East. He was a great defensive player early in his career. Now has rounded his game. He's a great offensive player as well. Marquette was in the top two teams in the league until their great point guard, Dominique James, went down in the Connecticut game. As a result, they're playing without one of their star players. And there is Mr. Dominique James, one of my favorite players in college basketball. Second leading scorer in the history of the school. Third, I mean, and second leading assist man. So they are without one of their star guys in this game. Trying to work his way on that coaching staff, I think. That, but, but no, it's a tough break for the senior out of Richmond, Indiana. As you mentioned, breaking that left foot against UConn back in late February. You'll see Marquette try to take the ball to the hole, and you saw the offensive foul on Burke. Wilkinson, the conference player of the year, takes the first shot for the Aggies. And so a little tight here early to start. Nearly a minute 30 in. Craig Marquette is a small team by Big East standards. Lazara Hayward at 6'6", their best big guy, but they take the ball hard to the basket, and they are a gang rebounding team. Everybody's involved. Aggies stand their ground. Their shot is off the mark. Utah State starts 0 for 2. Pooh Williams had a good look from the corner. And back into the front court. Acker, 5'8", junior out of Hazel Crest, Illinois, and Marquette scores first. Well, it's R. Hayward is the guy I spoke of earlier. They are not a post-up team, but he at 6'6", 225, combo forward, Craig, plays inside and outside. A very, very tough matchup. Yeah, Bobby, you're right. He can score many positions. He'll play the five. He can play the four. He can play the three. Quill works the wing in the corner. Who Williams. That ball was last touched off the head of Matthews. Nine on the shot clock. Mark got the lone bucket. Lazar Haywood scoring the first two. Just over two minutes in. Quayle. He'll pop and hits. Quayle averages 13 points of ball game, Bob. A junior college All-American at Western Wyoming JC made the switch over to Logan, and boy, the kid can score. 23-year-old junior. <laughs> About that one from Lazar, huh? I heard a thud. <laughs> He's got a big smile on his face. <laughs> The last game that Marquette played, of course, was in the Big East Championship in New York, and a wild one against Villanova, one of the top teams in the nation, of course, and uh, they lost that one at the buzzer. Wesley goes on the block, turns, hanging on a pivot. Nice move. Up and around Dwight Burke. The combination of Wesley and Wilkinson, a lot of beef there, 240 pounds each. Big size advantage for them. Last touch by Marquette until so the Golden Eagles turn it over for the second time. Well, the up and under mover, as you described, Ty Wesley, use of the left hand, very appropriate in that situation. He had a double-double in their championship game against Nevada. 14 points, 11 rebounds for Ty. And, of course, making the WAC All-Tournament team with numbers, as you just mentioned. 4-4 four, four our score, Utah State Marquette. Coyle takes a look back at that bench. And, of course, this, this is an interesting story with Utah State, how they call plays, Bob. They've got two different sets of numbers, two different colors. One is hot, one is not. 
<laughs> and there they are. The assistant coaches put those things up during the course of play. It's hard to see right now, but the thumbs up play is the one I like the best. That's when I get to shoot. And of course, when they do that, we don't know whether the red or the blue are the ones that the players are looking at. Of course, when you're being pressed, you know, it's hard to look over there and but see Bob, what's happening. I think the challenge for Stu Morrill and his staff, though, did you see the, the number of plays and how do you get those off quick enough for your point guard to take a glance and read it? Yeah, I tell you, when I was coaching, our guys couldn't even remember our plays. Never mind anybody <laughs> else's plays. On the drive in, the dump down and a foul. Matthews hit the deck. You know, we have a little altitude here in Boise as well, and uh, this is not something that Marquette is used to. They are not a very deep team, especially with Dominique James out. Buzz Williams does not substitute often, and he's going to have to make a little bit of an adjustment here. Kubion comes in for Maurice Acker. Utah State much more used to the altitude here. That foul was on Matt Forasano, who just checked in his first. Matthew stops and goes, kicks it out straight away. First three-point shot of the day. And down she goes by Hayward. Well, that's the combo forward. We saw Hayward score inside early. He loves the top of the key jumper. Hayward seven, Utah State four. <laughs> Could be on adding some energy right here. The player from Venezuela. Williams out front. Just over four minutes in. Not a lot of touches so far for Wilkinson. Big fella goes on the baseline, hangs on that pivot, puts up the shot, and the foul will be on Hayward. So Wilkinson powers his way in. Two shots coming and a timeout. And from downtown, Hayward. Marquette by three in Boise. Back in Boise, Marquette with the early 7-4 lead on Utah State. And the Golden Eagles, Bob, hitting three of their first four shots. The three shots all knocked down by Lazar Hayward. Yeah, and Jarrell McNeil not involved yet. The superior player on this team, number 22 for Marquette. And Wilkinson, the WAC player of the year on the line. 26 years old. High school dropout, GED. What else is in his background? Well, what's amazing after dropping out, went on to junior college, and now is the WAC Conference Player of the Year. What a journey, as you mentioned, 26 years young, but he was cut, by the way, from his sophomore high school team because the 6'8 big man, all he wanted to do was shoot threes, and the coach said, that's not gonna happen. So he decided to drop out of high school. <laughs> and now we're here playing on the big stage of the NCAA tournament. And he's got a 3.8 GPA right now, which is good. He was quoted as saying, I would have cut me also. <laughs> Some defense right here by the part of Utah. Hard to stay with Marquette's dribble drives. Haywood with five on the shot clock. Oh, oh, oh. it from the corner. <laughs> is oh. he ready for the NCAA tournament or what, Craig? Ten points to start this game. All ten by Marquette and five minutes in. Quayle pushes. To be on. Gave a little pressure on him. Formasano slides it down, goes baseline, pull up jumper, soft touch by Quayle. Nice looking jumper by Jared Quayle. Yeah, nice player also. He older as well, 23-year-old point guard. You like to have that kind of experience. Back to man-to-man -man for the Aggies. Utah State trying to hang tough against Hayward. There's a shot just inside the three-point line. And it's chased down by Marquette. Fresh 35 on the clock. McNeil rattles in two. So McNeil, averaging nearly 20 points a game, scores his first two. Number one scorer in the history of this school, which includes, by the way, Dwayne Wade. Quill works the wing. He'll pop it straight away. Bangs off the rim. Here comes Marquette on the run. Wesley Matthews. Utah State, Bob, has the ability to score in spurts. And right now, they're down by six. 
That ball goes out of bounds, 19 on the shot clock. Both coaches will substitute and coming up on AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, and Seth Davis will take you out for a look live at all the action going on in this wild week of basketball. And plus, I'll get you caught up in all the latest tournament news, plus an AT&T Naismith watch update. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Hayward cooling off just a bit and crashing the boards is Ty Wesley. Hayward is getting clean looks. As I mentioned, a very difficult guy to guard. If you're used to guarding an interior player, you got to guard him both outside and inside. Very, very tough to do. First miss after dropping down his first four shots. Over the top in the corner. Quayle tries to penetrate. Back out to Formasano. Wesley hanging on a pivot. Well, how about that double team nice, by Marquette? Yes, excellent defense there. Pull up jumper. Good look off the mark and out of bounds. Last touch by Utah State. Matthews had a straight on. Pull up 17 footer. 18 points a game for this star player, senior on this team. Buzz Williams inherited great talent from Tom Crean when he came here. And the effectiveness of this team has to do with Crean's toughness that he ingrained, as well as Buzz giving the guys the freedom to work. Offense this year a little bit less structured than in the past. A lot of freedom for the three guys who are the star players. Hayward out, Burke in. Shot by McNeil comes off. Oh, it's off the rim once again, and the tip drill is on. Jimmy Butler in. McNeil drives, hangs it in, throws it away. Quayle took the pass away in the paint. Aggies with the ball down by six from the corner. In and out. Stevon Williams, Bob, good look. That ball just rimming out. That shot would have cut it to three. Stevon Williams had 22 against Fresno. In and out, as you mentioned. Everybody climbing all over the boards. Easy call right there for the officials. Wilkinson back in after a short blow. Two whistles now on Matt Formasano. Wilkinson, Bob Hill, just a one free throw so far here in the first half, nearly eight minutes in. Being defended well by Burke. In traffic, one more time from the corner. That ball bangs off the rim and a foul as Hayward had another good look from the corner. Well, Jimmy Butler crashed the offensive boards from the weak side. Wesley feels that he was not involved in that. Stu Morrill agrees. Two fouls on the power forward of the Aggies. That is not good news. Marquette, even though they are a small team, they crash the boards. Lots of times, four guys on the offensive glass, good athletes. Kick out to Matthews, goes around Williams, ball is stripped, it's loose. Aggies have it on the run. Well, look at that defensive pressure. Marquette trying to recover after the turnover and nearly gave it right back. Wesley hangs it out. Wilkinson on the block, trying to back his way in with 17 on the shot clock. Great defense, tied up, puts up a tough shot with the right hand, and Burke brings down the rebound. Burke really doing a great job defensively right there. He knows what it is to guard big people in the league. 11th, 10 to 2 on the rebounding. 10 to advantage for Marquette. And a timeout, 11 27 to play. Opening half in Boise. Oh, that young lady, Marquette fan for life. And the Golden Eagles up early, 13 to 7 on Utah State. Marquette, by the way, Bob started hot, five of seven. Most of those shots coming off the hand of Lazar Haywood. And since then, Marquette 0 for their last eight. Well, I'll tell you what, when the, at the start of the game, Gerald McNeil right here is their star player. Not very much involved so far in this game. Only one shot taken. Wesley Matthews also. Utah State, Utah State doing a, a nice job knowing who the scorers are on Marquette. And Marquette doing a very, very good job defensively. Wilkinson not involved. 0 for 2. Not getting a lot of touches. Quayle has been the star at the offensive end so far. Scoring two buckets. Quayle feeds the big man up top. Hands it off to Newbold. Utah State, a very patient team. 
a high basketball IQ, and that comes from their head coach, Stu Morrill. Badly missed, had a good look with Wesley, and Marquette's into the front court. McNeil pushes inside, and a reach-around foul. Newble got him on the dribble drive, and one thing Marquette Bob will do, they will take it to the rack time in, time out. In fact, they're 10th in the country in free throw attempts, 26 attempts a ball game. They're fifth in the country in makes at nearly 19 a ball game. Yeah, and they have no post-up game. <laughs> it's amazing. It's all dribble drives, and of course, McNeil, Dominique James, of course, was part of that, and Wesley Matthews all are very very good in that area Acker with his size does not get into the paint as well they were trying to slam down two more it comes off the rim quail out front Wilkinson Williams tied up midcourt plenty of time on the clock down to 22 just over 10 to play in the first half and the first of four today here in Boise Wesley holds Impressed by, by the defense of Marquette. As Quayle goes baseline, dumped down, Wilkinson gets his first two. That's the first possession of the game that Utah State ran its stuff and showed you why they led the nation in field goal percentage two years in a row. That was very, very patient. Everybody handled the ball nicely, crisp passing. That's what they would like. Wesley Matthews knocks down the jump shot, and the lead is back up to six, 15-9 Marquette, as we're under 10 minutes of play in the first half. Wilkinson hands off to Pooh Williams, looks inside on the block, nothing there. Quail goes baseline, contact. Nice D. And a foul, offensive foul. Quail picks up his first. Matthews gets into the right place at the right time. Marquette's defense has been stellar so far in this game. Watch the guy come from the weak side, steps in right there. Wesley Matthews in the right place, takes it on the chest. That's what you want. Little half court trap now by Utah State. They got to try to get something going right here. They are struggling at the offensive end. Credit high grades to the Marquette team. They have been quick, and their length on their defense has been excellent. Jackson Meyer, number 25 on the court for Stu Morrill. Shot clock winding down to 10, now to nine as Haywood holds. Over the top, tough pass, McNeil on the dribble, the drive. Tried to pop the shot up with one on the shot clock, and that is a tough foul, Bob. When Pooh Williams is there, puts up a hand and picks up his first. He got him right on the wrist, no doubt about that. I've done a lot of Marquette games this year. I haven't seen McNeil shoot one out of bounds yet. <laughs> this guy is an unbelievably good player. 6'3", 200, great on defense, great on offense. And a 72% free throw shooter makes the first. CBSSports.com covers every moment of the madness. Get the latest expert analysis and updates, plus live scoring and stats from every game. It's all at CBSSports.com. You are looking at the number one scorer in the history of the illustrious Marquette basketball program and the number one guy in steals as well. And there have been a lot of great players at this school, including Dwayne Wade. Now known as D-Wade. <laughs> That's right. And thank you, Dwayne, for bringing gold back to the United States from Beijing in the Olympics this summer. Up top, nice lob inside, and Wilkinson is hit and hammered. Bob, you have to appreciate the timing of that, of that lob. That is a tough pass entry into Wilkinson. Well, it was fronted by Burke, and Acker came from the weak side, got his hand on the ball, looked pretty clean. But... The, the foul comes before the shot, so only an inbound play for Utah State. After picks up his first, Williams. The mayor's going to reset out front. Tenacious defense by Marquette. Tenacious. Savon Williams, he'll give it away. Shot from the corner, won't go. And through the hands of Wesley. Did Marquette save it? They're going to give it back to Utah State. Great hustle on the part of Hayward right there. Wilkinson is a very, very interesting player. I, I, he's posting up, but not getting anything there. He's being fronted, double team on the, on the pass on the way in. I think he can face up from the top of the key area because he's got a nice looking stroke. 
McNeil goes out and Wesley Matthews back in for Buzz Williams. Under eight and a half to play in the first half. Driving inside and a foul. Well, there is Dominique James, Craig, and uh, he is a missing piece of this great, great team. He got injured against Connecticut in the first few minutes. Before he was injured, we see the before, 23 and four in the ensuing numbers. And since he's been injured, only one and five. Now that's partly due to who they were playing as well during that time. Well, Three teams in the top 10, UConn, Louisville, and Pitt. Also a loss to Syracuse, and then lost to Villanova in the quarterfinals of the Big East tournament. That was a heartbreak game, 76-75. Yeah, Dwayne Anderson had a layup at the buzzer at the Garden in that one. Aggies are now 0 for 5 from outside the three-point line. They're being defended well. Hands are up on those shots. Good intensity by both teams here. Great patience by Marquette. Matthews, free throw line oh, jumper, oh. got it. Notice how he bumped the defender off right there. That is some upper body strength by Wesley Matthews. Matthews, Two for six, huh? And Bob Matthews is one durable player, making his 103rd consecutive start for Marquette today. We're seeing some lockdown defense at this end of the floor. Marquette wants the challenge of guarding Utah State, the number one team field goal percentage offense in the country. 7.22 to play a timeout. Matthews turns, fires, drains it, and it's a 10-point lead for Marquette. reinvent traffic. We reinvented how the driver navigates around it. With advanced XM real-time traffic and predictive weather, suddenly, the world's not so complex. The all-new 2010 Lexus RX. Good drivers are a dime a dozen. My job is to find real drivers. Someone that drives their 10-second cars not in a straight line, but to push it and make it through places no one else would take it. We cool? Yeah, we're cool. Fast and Furious. Rated PG-13 starts April 3rd. Applebee's two for 20 menu is back. Pick two entrees and one appetizer, all for 20 bucks. And remember, you can also have the two for 20 dinner at home with Applebee's car side to go. It takes two. Detachability, bad. Now you see, that's why I don't ride a bike. Drinkability, good. Not too heavy, not too light. Bud Light, the difference is drinkability. Incredible. Daisies in every color. No way. Cyclamen. In purple? Spring starts at Lowe's. Come see our enormous selection of plants and flowers specially selected for your area. Are those geraniums? And it's all at everyday low prices, guaranteed. Lowe's, let's build something together. I was told I wasn't allowed to play basketball inside because I might break this vase. <laughs> oh, yeah, they were right. I shouldn't have done it. Don't miss the Late Late Show tonight. Gentlemen, start your brackets. Russell, who you got going all the way? I'm still trying to decide between my final two. I like his tournament better. Good job by Bill Self getting those guys involved. Of course, Chalmers and Aldridge, the two guys, the key players on that team. Marquette with a 10-point lead on Utah State. Again, there's that defense, a reach-in steal, and Butler takes it up and two bounces and drops down two. Dwight Burke on the board. The quickness of Marquette is something that Utah State I don't think has seen this year. They are really having difficulty running their stuff. Marquette is intense at this end of the floor. Fourth turnover here in the half by the Aggies as Boo Williams looks inside. Now front to Newbold, right to left hand crossover, hanging on a pivot. 
Bob, the defense of Marquette so impressive. There was a two two men looking right down your throat every time you touch the ball. Inside, the spinner is short. And that ball is last touched and went off the leg of uh, Burke. Well, an example of what you're talking about right here, hands everywhere, people getting their hands on the basketball, and here, Butler finishes an easy one at his end of the floor. Credit McNeil with the poke away on that particular play. You know, the value of quick hands, defensive end of the floor, so, so important. Jump hook short, rebound with authority as Hayward. Utah State sending nobody to the offensive glass right now. And Bob, so far, Wilkinson negated in this game. Just a bucket and a free throw. And he averages 17 and 7 per game. Marquette undersized with six offensive boards in the game. Utah State bigger, but only with two. Matthews runs it around out front. Six on the shot clock. He'll pop it deep. Bangs it off the rim over the back, and a foul will be whistled. Uh, Jimmy Butler, his first. Well, Vitamin Water Revive is asking fans to revive their game winning moment at NCAA.com slash revive for a chance to win a trip to this year's NCAA Men's Final Four. Revive to survive. Well, Utah State needs some revitalization right now because their offense, normally very, very strong, looks inept right now because of Marquette's stellar play. Bob, they need a big goal. Wesley, oh, overshoots the hoop, had a great look baseline. Under six minutes to play, first half, McNeil controls on the wing, and a little foul on Wilkinson. Came out to meet him and threw a hip into him. Wilkinson is first. Well, Stu Morrow's got to find a way to get Wilkinson involved in this game. So far, he's not even getting, it's not that he's missing shots, he's not even getting the kinds of shots that Stu Morrow would like. That Al that you see on McNeil's jersey right there refers to Al McGuire, the great Marquette coach who passed away several years ago and was a great broadcaster at CBS. Our former colleague, 1977 national champs. McNeil, two for two, six-point half. He will always be remembered at Marquette because of that. That is a great honor to have your name on somebody's jersey like that. Utah State, just one of their last ten. That is a shot the Aggies needed. Oh, so big by Wilkinson. And you know what? We talked before him not being able to get a shot close to the basket. The face-up game is what he's going to have to develop right here, and he can do that. And the turnover now, Utah State trying to make a run late here in the first half, but they give it right back. Buzz Williams calling a set play right here. Marquette loves the pick and roll on the perimeter. McNeil and Matthews can really take people. McNeil straight away. One bounce off the rim out front. Quayle Wesley runs it. One more pass. Oh, stop at the follow. Boy, Quayle followed up. The block shot. And a timeout with 4.32 to play. Utah State trying to feed off some energy. They've got the hometown crowd behind them here in Boise. to Boise Marquette with a 23-13 lead and Bob you look at the game summary field goals have been tough to come by Marquette 8 of 21 Utah State 6 of 19 and the rebounding all to the Golden Eagles they've got a 15-9 advantage but Marquette's forced five Utah State turnovers and held the Aggies at just 32 percent from the floor I don't think the Aggies are used to this quickness that uh, playing against the schedule that they played against Marquette is one of the quicker teams in the country and right now their defensive quickness is really making this game the way it's gone. Marquette, on the other hand, started hot, and they have gone cold. 0 for 6 from three-point range, and 3 for 14 after they started 5 of 7. Hayward, right here with the basketball, has been the chief offensive weapon so far. Gives it up to Matthews, right back to Hayward, tries baseline. Started by Brady Jardine, who just oh. checked in, and right back at you. What a tough matchup for Wilkinson, huh? I mean, he can't, if he goes on the perimeter, Hayward is going to take him off the dribble like that. And then Hayward can, can pop from the top of the key as well. Very difficult for Wilkinson to guard Hayward. 
12-point first half. Lazar Hayward out of Buffalo, New York. Marquette gets it right back. Hayward pops short. That ball is loose and out of bounds and last touched by the Aggies. Timeout on the floor in Boise, 3.37 to go. Welcome back to Boise, West Region. First of four games today, and it matches Utah State Marquette. And Bob, so far, the Golden Eagles flying high defensively. Well, the interior defense has been getting the rebounding his help. Wesley gets double teamed here. They try to swing the ball, and watch this shot because it's challenged by Burke. Air ball, and they get out. And of course, at this end, Jarrell McNeil can jump. I can guarantee you that. So lots of good defensive plays by Marquette, and that's why they have the lead that they have. Utah State led the nation in field goal percentage. There you see the number on the left. Today, not so good. 32%, and Wilkinson, the WAC Conference Player of the Year held to just five points here in the first half. Matthews on the inbound. Haywood against Wesley. Stu Morrill was coming for a double dribble, and they'll reset with 25 on the shot clock. Wesley has done a great job. He got two fouls very early in the game, and he stayed in here, and he's guarding tough people. That's a, that's a gamble on the part of Stu Morrill. McNeil went right to left hand, split the defense, and then got Quayle up, and Jared Quayle whistled for his second. I think Stu has a lot of confidence that Ty Wesley is not going to pick up his third before the half ends. This is a gamble. Marquette four for four from the line. And the first miss, NCAA March Madness On Demand is streaming every game for the NCAA Championship online for free. Watch any game from the tournament live at NCAA.com. McNeil, first team all Big East, seven points to go with Hayward's 12. And Bobby, I tell you, it's just a two-man show. Yeah, and right now, Jared Quayle is out of the game. He has three baskets, and he is being guarded very heavily by Kubion, not getting any kind of look. Notice right here, Kubion on Quayle. Quayle is the guy who scored early. This, my friend, is great, great D. Check this out, all over the floor. Right on his belt buckle, in his face. Wilkinson gives it up from the corner. Shot is off. And right now, the Aggies are faced with a one and out. I'll tell you, I think they were just, just satisfied to get a shot off. Matthews stops and pops. That jumper comes off the rim of the rebound into the hands of Newbold. Well, that's been pretty cold, too, Craig, in this game. Other than the start, they have been shooting some bricks. Quayle. He's the guy they got to have. And the Aggies finally hit the first three, and now coming up, Kubion. This is not good news right here. They are not deep as it is. Right here, Kubion trips on his own man and goes down. Terrific play right here. And uh, with Dominique James out for the year, Maurice Acker is going to have to play an awful lot of minutes. Right now, they have no point guard in the game. Bob, you're right. He just uh, collided with Wesley Matthews, turned the ankle on the way down, and he's on the bench trying to shake it off. I don't think it looks that bad to me. It didn't look like it turned, did it? Burke, Burke is on the court. You're right. There's not a true point guard on the court for Buzz Williams, Marquette, Golden Eagles. Utah State, mind you, just hit their first three after missing their first six. McNeil and Wesley Matthews will handle the point guard duties. Inter interchangeable parts. Marquette, McNeil, good look. Falls off the left side of the rim and battling for the rebound. It goes out of bounds off Marquette. Marquette is not taking advantage of their great defense. Their offense has been very, very weak in this game other than the big start. They're getting clean looks, but not knocking them down right now. Jarrell McNeil's jump shot looks like he's sitting back on it a little bit, not extending his whole body. Very unusual for him. He's a 40% downtown shooter. Right now, I think he's lost some confidence. And Bob, that foul was on Butler going over the back of Wilkinson. So two on Jimmy Butler. Acker with a couple of fouls for Utah State. Wesley with two. Quayle has two. Kubion back in the game. 
Just needed a breather. Williams' shot is off. Tough inside, and the tip. Count it. Well was there, but give that one. That was a tough two by Wesley. Utah State making a little run. You can hear the crowd. Big blue Aggie fans on their feet in Boise. Poise required. McNeil threw it away. 12 on the shot, 108 to play. They feed off the sixth man in Logan Spectrum. That arena is deafening. And they brought that crowd to Boise. Rarely lose at home. Oh, Wilkinson denied. What a block from nowhere. 42 seconds of play in the first half. Utah State trying to make a run at Marquette. McNeil takes the shot. Wesley crashes the board. And now Utah State will play for the final shot. Bob, they cut this game to six. They hit a three. It's five. You thought they'd go to Wilkinson for that shot. I think they're going to Quayle. He's the only guy on the team that can create his own. Nope, the big fella will take it three. Off the rim. McNeil climbs the ladder and grabs a rebound as the horn sounds. That's the end of the first half here in Boise. Marquette 26, Utah State 18. We'll send you the great gumble with AT&T at the half. After these messages, you're watching CBS Sports. It's all about defense. Marquette suffocating defense on Utah State. They forced six turnovers and forced and got eight points off those six turnovers. Yeah, and, and it would have been a blowout situation, Craig, except for the fact that the two star players for Marquette, Wesley Matthews and Jarrell McNeil, three for 14 from the field. Very, very unusual. I don't know whether it's the altitude or what. I'm, I'm very glad the court is not blue, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am too. Be tough to pick up that uh, that basketball. Let's take a look now at the in-game box score powered by CBS Sports Network. Cable's home for NCAA March Madness. Well, Jared Quayle, if it weren't for him, they would really be in bad shape. Nine points in the first half, and of course, Lazar Hayward with 12, the leading scorer for Marquette. It's been a knockdown, dragout defensive battle so far, but now that we start the game at 10 30 in the morning mountain time i'm sure the players are awake and they'll be much better at the offensive end of the second half yeah coming up on high noon in the mountain time zone as you see buzz williams huddled up with uh, marquette and just a moment away from the start of the second half marquette rebounding today another big story you look at the season average hayward dominating with nine matthew six mcneil and butler and burke all in the mix bob and today all in the mix they have five guys who have had over a hundred rebounds so far they are a small team by big east standards size wise so they must gang rebound it's not like dewan blair from pittsburgh or griffin from oklahoma state or Thabit and adrian at connecticut so uh, this is a team that all of the guys must rebound including the small guys like Maurice Acker. Marquette 17-1 this season when they lead at the half. Their only loss was an overtime loss to the Orange of Syracuse. Utah State has that ability to bounce back and they'll have to do it here this morning in Boise. By the way, the 18 points scored by the Aggies in the first half, that ties them for their fewest this season. They scored 18 against Louisiana Tech, but bounced back to win that game, Bob, by 13. There you go. Well, that will give them uh, a little hope to get started. They ended the half well. They made a three, and they had some energy. And they look like they have the energy right now as well. McNeil takes it inside the arc, lowers the shoulder, goes baseline. Acker straight away. Of his shots other than one since the time that Acker has been starting six games ago are all from three-point range. So Acker after being shut out drops down three to start the second half. Acker played his freshman year at Ball State inside Wesley. And Ty Wesley scores his third bucket six points. 
but you can't trade threes for twos. Right there, uh, a little token pressure, Craig, and then back into a zone. They realize what we realize, that Matthews and McNeil are not shooting very well from the outside. They're going to challenge Marquette to make shots from the perimeter. Wise decision. Clog the middle, get a turnover. Here comes Quayle out of the pack. Aggies try to run with him. Wilkinson goes baseline. Hayward has his hand straight up. Quayle kicks, hits, yes! Star of the game for the Aggies. Second three-point shot buried by Quayle, the junior, from Perry, Utah. Five of eight from the field so far in this game. And the Aggies have trimmed it down to six. Coming up on two minutes into the second half, Matthews, the dribble out front. Picked up by Newbold. Now McNeil goes baseline. An extra pass by Marquette. Short jumper. Quayle. Rebound. Knocked down. And a foul. But right here, the zone allows them to clog the middle. And therefore, the run out right here, Quayle with very, very good hands, leads the break. And they score at this end from the corner. Quayle deserves it. And he hits nothing but bottom. Very strategically speaking, the zone defense now, they don't have to worry about the outside shots of Marquette. They're not going down right now. So they play zone, and also when Marquette tries to pound it, because of the zone, they will have people there for help. Nubel skip pass, Wilkinson. Just two of six from the floor bottom in the first half by the big fella. Nubel, nice pass. Wesley, Nubel. Stops. I thought he was going to take that jumper. The trailer, one extra pass, and a hammer by Wesley. Oh, the Aggies. You're right. The alarm went off at halftime. <laughs> Four-point game in Boise. Marquette needs to find some outside shooting, and it can't be Lazar Hayward all the time. McNeil and Matthews must step up. And McNeil threw that ball just right by Matthews. The Aggies get it right back, and they are on a run. Terrific passing right here, and Ty gets the dunk at the end of it. That's one of the reasons they led the nation in field goal percentage. Making the extra pass. Indeed. New bowl. Feeds Wesley, hands it off to Pooh Williams. Utah State knocking down three of three here in the second half, and a reach-in foul. Wilkinson... We'll go to the free throw line. And Haywood picks up his second personal foul. Nice bounce back right here. Wilkinson going strong to the basket, even though he was double teamed. And a very good free throw shooter is Gary Wilkinson. 83% on the year. Misses his second of this first round game against Marquette. One of three today. One more for the big fella. He had a dislocated thumb against San Jose State, and that's why he has that wrap on his finger. Six points for Wilkinson. And the Aggies close the gap to four. Make that three, 29-26. As Ackerbrack backs it out. If you take the dribble drive away from Marquette, they're going to struggle. High floater, in and out. Aggies will get it right back. And right now, Bob, the lid is on the bucket for Marquette. You maybe, notice, it's, maybe it's that end of the floor. The lid was on the bucket for Utah State at that end in the first half. Utah State has never led in this game. They've cut it down to three, down eight at the half. Here's the response. Marquette's going to go full court pressure right here. Try to get some turnovers. Aggies had six turnovers. That's not that many against Marquette pressure. Quayle pops out straight away, picked up by Acker. Over the top, Wesley, left-hand dribble, slides, puts it up. Oh, what a shot! A little finger roll with the right hand, and Wesley has powered the Aggies back into this ballgame. Utah State has crawled back to within one, Bob, thanks to a 10-3 run to start the second half. Indeed, and Ty Wesley has been the guy on the spot three for three in the second half for the power forward from Utah State. 
Stu Morrow had a great halftime speech, and what he said to his players was this. We can't guard these guys one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go zone. Their two top players are not hitting from the outside. When they drive in there, let's double and triple team them. It's been very, very effective. The WAC Conference Coach of the Year. Acker out front. Utah State has never led in this game. Matthews dishes inside. Hayward got the shot up and in. Well, getting the ball into the interior of the zone that time, that was a very difficult play executed well by Marquette. I still think that McNeil and, Wes and Wesley Matthews are going to have to make some perimeter shots. Wesley on the block, kicks it out. Two Williams on the dribble drive. Out front, Newbold on the wing. Quayle, he's had a hot hand all night long. That's 12, and now a foul as Wesley hits the deck. We'll step aside in Boise, 15-22 to play. And it's a three-point Marquette lead. And thank you, Greg. I'll tell you, great battles usually, Bob, with eight and nine seeds. And they've got one today in Dayton with Oklahoma State and Tennessee. And how about Marquette and Utah State? The Aggies 11th in the West against Marquette the 6th. I'll tell you, it's been a very interesting game so far. Defense predominated in the first half, and now the offensive team, both teams, starting to heat up. First miss by Utah State in the second half. Knocked down their first four shots. Matthews, the trailer is Acker. As we roll up on 15 minutes of play in this one. Matthews, left-hand dribble. McNeil tried to settle down the Golden Eagles. With a three-point lead and a whistle baseline. And the bump of the foul will be on Newbold. I am surprised Utah State has gone back man-to-man. -man. The zone was very, very effective. Stu Morrow probably just trying to keep Marquette off balance a little bit by changing defenses. On the inbound, McNeil. Puts the ball on the floor, nearly turned it over. Acker saves it, up and in. Oh, did Marquette dodge a bullet there? They gave that ball nearly away, and Hayward scores his 16th point. High marks to Acker. He was the closest guy to the floor at five foot six. Not a long ways to fall. <laughs> Picks up Quayle out front. Newble on the wing straight away. Wilkinson, big redhead, gives it away. Quayle short follows, goes baseline. Wilkinson has a good look, spins it in for two. This team can shoot when they have their feet set. It's Marquette's job to make sure they don't have their feet set. They did it very well in the first half. Not as well in this half. Wilkinson scores his eighth point. Quail with 12. Wesley 10 to lead Utah State. 16 by Hayward to lead Marquette. Acker behind the three line. One bouncing off. Newble and the Aggies want to run. Into the front court, he comes. Looks low, finally to Wilkinson. Got a mismatch there with Hayward. Out front, Newble. Try to bank it off the glass. Wesley couldn't keep it alive, and Butler now controls for Marquette. You talk about the mismatch, Wilkinson and Hayward. At both ends of the floor, it's a mismatch. But Wesley is guarding Hayward now. Wilkinson couldn't do the job on him on the perimeter in the first half. Hang it out to Hayward. Acker, baseline, great D by Quayle. Shot clock down to 10. Little's down to nine. Great D, hands are up, the shot is away and short, and Wilkinson rebounds. Nice D by Utah State right there on a guy who's a very good one-on-one -on -one player. Matthews really struggling, as is McNeil. I'm not sure Marquette can win this game with those guys not getting more involved offensively. Quayle, Newbold, they go baseline, count it, and Wesley will go to the free throw line. Four for four in the second half for the power forward. Excellent screen right there by Wilkinson, gets Ty Wesley open. Stu Morrow said the most indispensable player on our team is Mr. Wesley. Two fouls in the first half. He continued to play, so you know he's got some intelligence about him. Pretty good right now. Six for nine from the field. Mostly close in. Started all 35 thus far for Stu Morrill. 
out of Provo, Utah. And we're tied. All the way back as Utah State, a 13-point game for Ty Wesley. 33 all in Boise. Will be on back on the floor, spinning, hanging, count it, McNeil. <laughs> what a beautiful shot. Struggled in the first half, but still Bob with 10 points. I'll tell you right. Right here, this is what Jarrell McNeil can really do. And right here, this is typical of his style of play. Now he's angry with himself in this game. He's upset that he's not playing well, but he's got to go to something else. The threes are not falling. He made five of six free throws in the first half. His involvement is very, very important, obviously. Three-point play, Kubion, backcourt pressure, and a quick hand check. Well, that was a quick whistle, and Kubion picks up his first. Buzz Williams, first-year head coach. Nice to inherit a team like oh. this. Huh? Tom Crean goes off to Indiana and left the cupboard full. <laughs> Indeed. 36-33, Marquette. Looking for the back door here against the pressure. Same play, but to the opposite side. Good way to get Ty Wesley the ball. Wesley trying to power inside. Tough guy hanging on a pivot. Got it. Nice, nice move. Notice how he waited for the double to see if it was coming or not. And a player down for Marquette. Wesley Matthews looks like holding an elbow or shoulder. Bob, a trainer's on the court. Head coach Buzz Williams also there. Wesley Matthews, he entered. Matthews is up, senior out of Madison, Wisconsin, and a second-team All-Big East pick. Hard to really tell, you know. I mean, uh, that right elbow is, looks like what it's uh, most troubling to him. Matthews is a guy who has developed over the course of, of the season and of his career. Right here, Wesley waits to see if there's a double. When it doesn't go, he spins one way, then back the other. Nice pivot right here. Terrific defense, really, by Matthews. And we cannot see what happens right here. He didn't go down, so uh, maybe he got a little one of those stingers, huh? A little, little hit on the crazy bone, and that can burn. But look at the D, terrific pivot. Wesley jumps it up, got it, and then he grabs the elbow. Well, your arm can go a little numb in a situation like that, and that's what I think happened to him. You can see his numbers on the year very, very good. Not so great in this game. Well, there was a lot of contact on that play. Delayed reaction, but he's on the bench. And back to action with 12 minutes to play. It's a one-point lead for Marquette. Could be on. Quick step off to McNeil, straight away for three, short on that jump shot. And Pooh Williams reaches in, re big rebound. And the Aggies of Utah State with a chance to go on top. They are really running their stuff well in the second half. The ball goes from, some, from one side of the floor to the other, and then Wesley powers his guy underneath the basket. Crossover dribble, Ty Wesley, ball is loose. Wilkinson able to save it. Plenty of time on the shot, down to 13. A three on the way. Kicks out hard off the miss by Williams. Wesley inside and an offensive foul. So that's three on Ty Wesley. And a timeout, 11-22 to play. Marquette, Utah State in a battle. First to four in Boise. And Greg, thank you. Here in Boise, it's Marquette 36, Utah State 35, Ty Wesley. What's this impact? Third personal foul. Well, it impacts nothing because I, I, if I had a guy five for five in the second half, I would leave him in the whole time, whether he's got four fouls or three fouls. He's been spectacular. He's got 15 points in the game. He only averages 12. 
He's been the man in the second half for Utah State. Aggies have hit 7 of 11 in this second half, and Bob, they made only eight field goals in the first 20 minutes. Big turnaround. Kubion has a look. Jumper off the rim. Rebound inside, and Matthews is there. And a foul. Well, another way to get points when your offense is not going like it's not going for Marquette is attack the offensive boards, and Wesley Matthews is a guy who can do that. That foul was on Stevon Williams, his first. Obviously, the elbow that bothered him just a few minutes ago seems to be okay. Lob pass out front, Hayward. Goes down low, Matthews. Three Aggies there to meet him, and out of the pile comes Wesley. The big fella, good ball handler, gives it off to Williams. Corner shot, no. And a hard foul as Formasana, who just checked in, is hit and dropped to the floor. Wesley Matthews does not get his shot blocked very often, but three Aggies all over it right here. He was a little shocked that he didn't get to the free throw line on here. Stefan Williams, of course, and Famazano right there. And of course, Ty Wesley, the man on the spot as well, picking up the loose ball. And Bob, Jimmy Butler whistled for his fourth. He goes to the bench for Marquette. And back on the court is Dwight Burke. And Burke now ties up for Masato and calls timeout. We'll step aside, 10.44 to play in Boise. You do get a hint of drinkability right away. Does my pen have writability? Come on, people. We got to focus. We're not leaving until we've met our budget. We need ideas. We could cut back on marketing. We could eliminate bonuses. How about we stop buying Bud Light for every meeting? It's the only beer with just the right taste. Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. It was a joke! Second half, Utah State getting their way back into this game against Marquette. And Bob, they've just hustled. They've been digging after balls and hitting big shots. Well, no doubt about that. And right here, a lot of passes leads to a Ty Wesley dunk. He's been the star in the second half. Getting the ball inside to their power forward has been the formula for success for Stu Morrow. Take a look at this. First half, only eight. Second half, they've got seven baskets already. Seven of 12, 58 percent. Good look at Stu Morrow. Today they win in Logan. Ten straight, 21 seasons. Utah State rolls in today with a 30 and 4 record. Marquette 24 and 9. Not only 20 win seasons, 23 wins, the least in all those 10 years. Newble squeeze that ball into Wilkinson. Eight on the shot clock, down to seven, backs in on Burt, puts it up, catches the edge of the rim, but it's rebounded. They've got numbers. by Hayward. They've got numbers. They should go. Stop and go. Oh, they dropped it back down inside. And Hayward gave it away to Acker. Aggie somehow recovered. Hayward deep got it. He's the man in this game. Averages 16 and 9. And for Marquette, he's the guy that's the hottest in this game for them. 19-point ball game. Had 12 at the break. Marquette leads by four. Wilkinson, corner shot. It bounces off the rim, and guess who? Hayward. Nice challenge by Burke on that, huh? And a block. Marquette much better in the open floor than they are in the half court against the Aggies right here. Pushing it. And right here, Matthews gets the knock from Stephon Williams. Clearly a defensive foul on that one. I am very impressed with Utah State's offensive efficiency in the second half. This is what we were led to believe that they were so good at, and they have been excellent in the second half. Matthews, an 83% free throw shooter, drops in his first. And near the end of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each university's general scholarship. And you can learn more about Chevy Innovations at Chevy.com. Last week, I was at the Staples Center and uh, doing the championship of the Pac-10. And the Chevy award was given out. And after the game, a freshman got it. And he said, hey, coach, do I actually get the car? <laughs> what would you say? Yeah, I've got the keys right here. <laughs> Marquette answering Utah State's run. 
Williams. Ty Wesley. What a second half. Quail winds up and hits. Boy, has he been good or what? 15 for Quail, 15 for Wesley. And Utah State answers Marquette. Down by three, 9.09 to go. Timeout, Utah State. And now a timeout called on the Aggie sideline. We got a game in Boise. Stay tuned. We're coming back on CBS. And Bob, we update the bracket in the South. Jimmy Beheim and the Orange. Syracuse, uh, third seed in the South, advancing on. Later, Arizona State and Temple. But what a what a run! The six overtime victory. It's been a quite a couple of weeks for the Orange. <laughs> no doubt about that. And of course, several years ago when Jerry McNamara was there and they went to the Final Four, they had a great team. This year, they're making a run at the right time. The 2-3 zone, very, very effective for the Syracuse crew. Quayle picks up Acker out front, Hayward. 19-point ball game for Hayward. Now McNeil lost it inside, and Wilkinson is there with the big mitts to pick it up, and across midcourt comes Quayle. No panic with the Aggies, just under nine to play. They feed Wesley. Just inside the three-point line, Newble holes. Quayle with 15 on the shot clock inside Wesley. Kick out, Williams. Had a look. Not on the shot. Down to seven. Williams winds. Ricochets off the rim of the rebound to Burke. Hayward takes a step in. Bang. How about the pump fake, huh? Get the defense off the floor. He's made three from deep, so you got to rush at him. Nice play. Hayward demonstrating the fact that he is the ultimate combo forward. 21, 12 in the first half. Aggies again will have to make a run at Marquette. Match up here, huh? Wesley out to Newble. In trouble, gives it off to Quayle. Again, 14 on the shot clock inside. Wilkinson, power move, up and in. They cleared the side for him. No help available that time. All four players on the other side of the floor, and that way Gary Wilkinson can go to work, and he does. Nice play. Marquette, as you look at the game summary with a three-point lead on the Utah State Aggies. Bob, both teams shooting in that 40% uh, category. Wesley leads 15 points for Utah State. Hayward, 21 points, 9 of 13 shooting. Yeah, and if you're watching, the, the rest of the team has 22 points for Marquette. So, obviously, Lazar Hayward has been the dominant player in this game. And the reason he's having to do that is McNeil and Matthews, the two stars, are 8 for 20 from the floor in this game. And Wilkinson completes the three-point play. That's 11 for the 6'9 senior out of South Jordan, Utah. And it's a two-point Marquette lead. I like the zone, Craig. I don't know why they went away from it at all. It was very, very effective to start the second half. The reason it's effective is the outside shooting for Marquette, other than Hayward, has been invisible during the course of the game. Could be on McNeil, right to left hand. Marquette is so quick on those passes. Takes a long shot from the corner. Missed by Matthews. And again, Utah State can tie or take the lead with a three-point bucket. Quayle controls with 15 points. Wilkinson hands it off to Pooh Williams. They like that dribble handoff, don't they? The post player catches it and dribbles handoff to a guard. He's got it right here. Look at the action inside. Matthews really working on Wesley. Quill goes baseline, kicks it off to Wesley, caught in the air. That ball is tipped, and the Aggies give it away. Pedaling back defensively, McNeil tried to reach up with a right hand, and the Aggies get it right back. Boy, Quayle was able to get back on the defensive end and disrupt that shot. He really did a nice job, and of course, McNeil rarely gets a flat tire like that. Two for 13, the star player. Quayle with 20 on the shot. Wilkinson, there's that spinner. Let the traffic fly by, count it. Did you see him feel the pressure? And then he went down baseline. 
And the reason that he got that, Craig, is all four players were on the other side of the floor. Hence, no help. 43 all under six to play in Boise. 11 seed Utah State against number six Marquette. Into the paint, Matthews powers it off. I thought that baby was down, and another rebound by Quayle. Heavy legs. Seven rebounds by the guard. By the way, Bob, fourth rank among point guards in the country. Averages nearly six rebounds a game, and he is everywhere. That's incredible. 6'1", 180. Quayle deep. First lead for Utah State. Marquette trying to answer from the corner. And we're going the other way. Aggies have it. It was last touched by Hayward. Quayle and Wesley have been remarkably good for the Utah State fans. Mr. Outside and Mr. Inside in this game. And Wilkinson starting to get the feel as well. The number one team in the nation, field goal percentage. Offense are the guys in the blue uniforms. And they're showing why in the second half. Under five minutes to play. Quail's three has put Utah State on top. Newble pops out, wants three more. Madhouse in Boise. Big Blue is alive, up by six on Marquette. Bob, you look at the tournament summary, the one seed's average margin of victory out of sight, nearly 50 points. The higher seeds now are 13 and four. That's in question here in Boise and the Big East so far 3 and 0. Utah State 11 0 run over the last 423. And Quayle and Newbold's threes on consecutive possessions were a dagger. Newbold just scored his first bucket and how big? Gigantic. Aggies hit one of eight from downtown in the first half. They've hit four of nine here in the second half as McNeil spins, gives it out. Acker for three, short. Rebound underneath, tough shot, count it. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a muscle move by Wesley Matthews. You are going to see some intensity on the part of Marquette here. They are behind right now. They've got to play pressure defense, but without fouling. Key point, hard to do, easy to say. Utah State as a team, 74%, and what you don't want to do is turn the ball over. And Butler has it, looking for a trailer. You got to credit the D. Baseline goes Matthews. The shot is up and a foul. Timeout in Boise. Buckle up, 342 to play. Marquette trailing by four. Utah State, 49. Marquette, 45. 342 to play. Craig Bowler Jack. Bob Wenzel, our CBS crew here in Boise. And what they had at the half. Only an 18-point first half by the Aggies. And now they have the lead of four. And Jared Quayle, four personal fouls. And boy, he's been on fire from downtown in the second half. 18 points. And Bob, in this game, he's hit four three-pointers. Yeah, four of seven from downtown. And if you're wondering, I doubt he's going to come out of the game with this few minutes left. You let him play it out. Right here, Matthews got fouled hard on the last possession. He led the Big East with 200 free throws made. Missed his first. He's now two of three. And he's an 82% free throw shooter. They could use that guy. Dominique James out for the year. Injured against Connecticut. Broken foot. Matthews able to sneak that one in. 49-46. Backcourt pressure applied by Acker. And Quayle on the court with four fouls. And Bobby Wright, Stu Morrill has to have his guard on the floor. 
They're going to see very heavy-duty pressure the last three minutes of this game. Who Williams controls in the corner. Quail wants three. No, short. Hey, no, no legs in that one. Acker deserves credit. He made Quail work so hard bringing the ball up, he had no legs in his shot. Driving in. Matthews, the spitter, won't go. And a foul. Right back to the line goes Wesley Matthews. Well, you can tell Marquette's mantra. When in doubt, take the ball to the basket, and Wesley Matthews has been doing that. Buzz Williams encouraging Acker to keep the pressure up in the backcourt, congratulating him for holding Quayle down on the last possession. Wilkins picks up his second personal. Matthews. Now a double figures, Bob, with 10. Second team all Big East. Matthews averaged over 18 points a game and hits two big ones. They're back. 49-48. Oh, yeah. Three minutes to play. Which one's hot, blue or red? Spur two. Get the ball inside to Ty Wesley. Wilkinson. On this block right here. There you go. Wesley on the block, feeling pressure. Now he takes it inside, clears. Williams on the way. Newble short. Wilkinson tries to chase it down. Boyce hammered down in front of the Utah State bench. A little block out in the corner. Wide open, but no legs in that shot either. Jimmy Butler, a little block out. And Wilkinson upset there was a no call. Welcome to the NCAA tournament, Gary. Welcome to March Madness in <laughs> Boise. <laughs> Marquette down one with the ball, 232 on the clock. They're hesitant. McNeil, Hayward, who wants the shot? Boy, he almost made that go, didn't he? Got fouled way below, carried through, almost made it go down. Ty Wesley, four. His fourth personal. Four on Quayle. Two best players with four fouls with 2.16 to go. Hayward now at the line trying to add to his 21-point total. A free throw here ties it. 49 all. So Marquette, Bob, I tell you, the key. They kept her calm. They played some tough Big East battles. One more. Marquette back on top. Backcourt pressure again. Quail to Wesley. Hung up. Gave it to Newble. On the dribble, the drive slides at baseline. Wilkinson ball is stripped. And the big fella hits the deck once again, but will shoot free throws. The scramble type game favors Marquette. In the end game, you're going to see lots of hands. There will be fouling. There will be very few clean shots for anybody in the last two minutes of this game. And Butler just picked up his fifth and is fouled out of this game. And now Buzz Williams will substitute Dwight Burke. 2.05 to play, Marquette 50, Utah State 49, Wilkinson, the conference player of the year, Bob, at the line, and this is clutch time. And he's a good free throw shooter. And I'll tell you why, he just knocked that in with no problem at all. Four of six in this game from the line, one more. Takes the bounce, puts it up, and hits. And just like that, the Aggies calmly retake the lead by one. Can you say overtime in Boise? Acker out front. Foul trouble for Quayle and Wesley for Utah State. Acker, the touch pass in the corner. Blocked! Oh, Wesley was up high to swat it away. The two power forwards on the perimeter. Lazar Hayward teeing it up, and Wesley blocking it beautifully without fouling. What a game has been in Boise. Marquette had an eight-point lead at the break. Utah State came out. Three-point shots have brought them back. Up by one, 145 to play. 
Marquette the sixth seed, Utah State the 11th, and Quayle just picked up his fifth. And Jerry Quayle, the hot-handed three-point shooter, is going to the bench for Utah State. He played an unbelievably good game. Early in the game, got them off, and then in the critical juncture of the second half, he made shots and passes. Jackson Mayer is gonna come in the game Critical time for him. Great game by this young man. One of the best rebounders. How about that, huh? No 10 for 10 at the line. No 10 whatsoever. Eton. Now, Schmidt's got a tough assignment with Moses because of the offensive rebounding ability. 15 to go. I wouldn't let Eton get it back if he gives it up. Look at Eton. Whoa, what a drive. Look at this kid's toughness. I mean, we always talk about physicality around the rim. Look at the cross. Lingerie on the deck. How about that? The adjustment around the rim. He just throws that chest at people. What a winner. Whew. Timeout. Oklahoma State, 6.7 to go. They have a one-point lead. Six seconds still on the clock. We'll bring you back for the final second. And meanwhile, back to Boise, a minute 25 to play. Can't re rebounds. That was Matthews. Newmold has had two open shots on the last two possessions. That is no accident. They realize he's not as big a threat. They're going to double-team Wesley. And Marquette, they want to burn clock. So right here, yeah, they got to take the best shot they can get, no matter when it is. 103, 102, a minute to play in Boise. Oh, what a big shot, McNeil. He's had a terrible game by his standards, and yet, at crunch time, he comes through. It was a mismatch. Huge possession for Utah State. Newell puts it on the floor. Williams goes baseline. They need to double him here. Wesley, spinning inside, jump hook short. And that ball is loose. Marquette has it, and a reach-in foul will be on Wesley. And if it is, that's going to be five on Ty Wesley. Jarrell McNeil is all Big East, and here's the reason. Played poorly, and yet makes a very, very difficult shot. The recognition that he was being guarded by a power forward, very, very important. Intelligent play and well executed, and now the second best player today, Ty Wesley fouls out for Utah State. Quayle went first, and now Wesley will follow him to the bench. Both teams huddled up around their coaches, Stu Morrill of Utah State, Buzz Williams of Marquette. What a game this young man has played. Very, very impressive. Knows the geography of the lane. Knows how to fake. Knows when to pass and when not to pass. And the two star players sitting right next to one another on the sideline. Acker at the free throw line. Just 51% on the season. 34 seconds on the clock there. We'll get you back. Meanwhile, seven seconds to play in Dayton. Vernon Raft. They did move the clock back to 7.2. Here we are. Tyler Smith. Go to the rim. Don't settle for the deep one. That's for three. And that's off the rim. That's what they Over the back. And this ball game is... So Oklahoma State by two. 77-75. Back to Boise. Desperate time now for Utah State. Ball is loose. Picked up. Two. No. Yeah! What a shot. Unbelievable. Cuts it down to two. 23 ticks on the clock. One more time. Thought the scramble was going to be a loose ball. You know how hard that is to pick that ball up off the floor and knock it in like nobody's business. No dribble, no nothing. He was intending to use the board, and he did. What a great shot. Now the foul situation comes into play. Utah State has fouled 10 times, so as soon as they foul Marquette, Marquette will get two free throws. And of course, they want to go for the steal first on this situation to the Aggies. Well, Pua, 38% shooter from downtown. So you're going to claim that he was going to, he called glass on that <laughs> shot. Oh, baby. 
Utah State Marquette battling. Coming up, Missouri Cornell. The Tigers, the third seed. Well, Utah State has won 30 games this year, so they are not used to losing. And guys make terrific plays. And of course, the two star players out of the game right now, Ty Wesley and Jared Quayle. And Pooh steps up big time from the left wing. Seven ties, four lead changes. Marquette with the largest lead of this game of 14. The last time Utah State won a tournament first round game, 2001. It went to overtime against Ohio State. And of course, last year, Marquette knocked off in overtime in the second round by Stanford, a heartbreaker, 82-81. They've been in some tight ones. They beat Kentucky in the first round. All has to do, nobody's guarding the ball, so it's five on four inbounds. The long pass is not available because they got the protector all the way back. Matt Formasano was uh, replaced Ty Wesley after picking up a fifth foul. There's pressure in the corner and timeout call. Nice job by Wilkinson pokes, poking that ball away, Craig. Now, when they inbound the basketball, it will be a spot inbounds play from the corner. That is not easy. This is Maggie, a very smart little girl. And this is a seat from the seven-passenger Toyota Highlander. This is a little seat. I'm a big girl. This is the eight-passenger Chevy Traverse, which offers more room, and it gets an EPA-estimated 24 highway. That's a big girl car. A very smart little girl. The all-new Chevy Traverse, America's best crossover. Qualified buyers get 0% APR for 60 months on Traverse. That's an average savings of over $6,100. Nineteen point three seconds remain. Utah State down two. Marquette had to call timeout after pressure in the backcourt. Quail out. Wesley out for Utah State, and Butler fouled out for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Nobody guarding the inbound pass. That was a tenuous one right there. That was a takedown. And the officials' great job getting in on that with Poo and also a Jarrell McNeil. Well, McNeil is a star player on this team. First team all Big East Conference. Has not had a good day by his standards. And yet made the key drive to put them ahead. And they've been ahead since. 72% from the free throw line. And six of seven today. Marquette holding on to a two-point lead. Utah State would hope, Bob, that they would one of two. If you go 0-2, that's the best case scenario. Second best one would be one of two. Give him a chance for a three to tie the game. McNeil. Oh, cut the edge. A lot of iron on that one. The follow. If he makes this one, they, Utah State has to score twice. Dominic James, now the assistant coach looking on. <laughs> McNeil, seven of eight. One more. Bins. Rims out, and Wilkerson clears Utah State with a chance to send this game to overtime. Wilkinson, player of the year, pumps it for three. Oh, just short. And over the back is Nubel. Not a bad shot, the backup by Wilkinson. Six for 17 on the year from three-point range. He felt it. Nice line, but the fadeaway caused it to hit front rim and not bottom. They got a pretty good one. It was challenged nicely. Hayward now at the line, 81%. Four of four today. Five seconds to play. Still alive is Utah State. Still breathing. The heart's still ticking. Tough. 26. Tough, tough, tough. Quickly into the front court. Meyer pumps three. Drained it at the buzzer. And the Aggies come up short. Marquette advances. 
What a fabulous game. The stars came out brightly tonight. Lazar Hayward was unbelievable for Marquette. And Jared Quayle and Ty Wesley were equally strong for Utah State. The team that won 30 goes down in the first round, and the first-year coach, Buzz Williams, gets his first NCAA victory. Let's check out today Chevrolet Players of the Game. Quail, incredible. Four of eight from downtown for Utah State. Finished with 18. Hayward, nine of 14, Bob, from the floor. Finished up with 26 points. Hit that key free throws down the stretch run. And Marquette survives a tough battle against Utah State. 58 to 57. And Marquette advances on here in Boise. And coming up, Missouri, the third seed against the 14th seed, Cornell, the Big Red. So Marquette 25 and 9. Utah State will finish the season at 30 and 5. And Hayward dropped down 26 points to lead the Golden Eagles. The Big East against the Western Athletic Conference. And this game, eight-point advantage at the break. 26-18. Utah State rallied back behind the hot shooting of Quayle and Wesley. But Marquette wins by one. Let's go back to New York. And here's Greg Gumbel.